This is Double Jab Podcast, powered by the Atlantic City Boxing Hall of Fame. Rich Kneon is alongside my broadcast partner and co-host, Rob Scott, joined with a very special guest, uh, Steve Smoker, and of course, one of the inductees for the Atlantic City Boxing Hall of Fame in 2017, which is right around the corner. Always good to catch up. How you been? Very good. Very good. Uh, big honor to uh, be recognized in your own hometown. My career started um, three blocks from here at the Tropicana, Tuesday night at the Trop. Wow. So uh, it's uh, to be first at anything is really an honor, and to go in with my fellow inductees is just uh, really something very, very special. It's truly an honor to uh, be part of the inaugural class, and uh, I'm sure that the, the hall is going to really, really take hold, uh, and uh, it'll, be, it'll be become part of Atlantic City's boxing history. Yeah, I mean, it's a rich history. That's something that we were just talking about, too. Top of the uh, top of the hour in the opening monologue. Well, it's definitely going to be a rich history, but um, it's the history that you, like you said, you started here, and um, you're definitely a part of it. But. Yeah. But uh, one of the reasons why you're here is not only because of your contribution to Atlantic City, but you um, you started here, but you're like one of the most world-traveled referees yeah. in the, probably the history of boxing. You have a lot of uh, frequent flyer miles, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been very, very blessed. This, this has been my home base, but as you mentioned, uh, I started early on with the international organizations, and uh, you build relationships, and... Uh, even today, uh, in the, uh, you know, I'm the, I, I believe I'm the most senior referee, that's a nice way of saying the most <laughs> mature, uh, in the United States. Maybe Lou Moret is still active in California, but uh, I'm in my 34th year, and uh, I still have the same excitement. I heard you gentlemen uh, speaking before I came on about the Pedraza uh, De, was it Devante? Yeah, yeah, the uh, Davis, Davis fight. fight. Yeah. I mean, the excitement of that fight. I still, you know, I wanted to be the third man. <laughs> you still have that desire. And uh, it's very, very exciting. I agree. I think that the, the, the best is yet to come. And I think uh, Atlantic City, uh, um, there's two cards already scheduled in New Jersey. One is scheduled here, I believe, um, Friday evening, a show box card. So hopefully... Yeah, the Roman Lopez fight. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Hopefully it'll start and we can move. It was a light year for Atlantic City last year, and maybe it'll pick up this year. You know, Rob and I were talking about this before we came on, and, and he brought up a really good point. When you talk about uh, referees in boxing, and, and no matter what, sometimes if a fight is stopped too early, the argument is, ah, oh, man, they should have just let him go. And then sometimes, all right, maybe they stopped it too late. Ha you know, to me, it's got to be uh, something that's innate, like instinctual when you're in the ring to know exactly if a guy's taking a pounding or, OK, I know his track record. This is what happens. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Exactly. Uh, it's like the beer commercial. You have to know when to say when. Uh, former Commissioner um, Ron Scott Stevens in New York, I think, put it in, in, in excellent terms. You don't want to see anyone hurt but you don't want to take the drama out of the fight. It just so happens that the greatest fights in history where referees allowed the fight to continue, uh, Corrales Castillo, Castillo, my fight, Kelly and um, Jermaine Taylor, guys coming back from the brink and having that innate sense to go forward. And um, it's just, as you say, over, over the years, you develop a sense. You don't want to be fooled, and you want to give the fighter every chance. I call it the loss of presence. If a fighter, I feel, cannot defend himself, mm -hmm. then I have to get in. But you got to be careful because younger referees can be fooled with the shoe shine, twenty shots and only two land. So uh, it is definitely an art, and I've been blessed to be a part of it and be able to develop with the work. Uh, uh, and proceed and try to learn. listen you learn from every fight as you and I know Rich yeah. well, Steve you, you and I we've actually worked with one another yes and, we have and, and we have a work, a ongoing working relationship to the point where you know in our conversations uh, we've we know that there are people out there who aren't officials and they 
basically they sit back and they watch TV and they, they make these assumptions or they make these accusations and, and talk about referees, whether it's the referees, the judges, and so on and so forth, as if, like, if they sit in your same seat that they could do the same thing that you do. Um, but at the same time, there are some cases of, you know, or shall I say, or I'm asking you, um, are there any cases in which even you as a referee uh, that you sat back, and not to name any names, but right. uh, were there any fights that you sat back and said, mm, they messed up, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, uh, uh, basically, you probably made your, your opinion or self-opinion uh, just as much as anybody else. No question. Excellent point, Rob. Um, but as you know, you, you can never mention anything at all. Mm -mm. Um, and I learned the hard way. Um, Meaning being critical of, of yes, someone else's yeah, refereeing yeah, style? Yeah. or Okay. No. For example, here's the classic example where I was uh, taught a lesson, and I spoke out of turn. And it was a hard lesson, but uh, it, it, it didn't prove to be in any way problematic. It was a learning experience. Uh, Richard Steele, who's since become a terrific friend, uh, we break bread at the International Boxing Hall of Fame together. I would have never stopped uh, um, the Chavez Taylor. Uh, red light in your face. Having every indication, the kid gave. He, he was never. He never recovered. Right. In in retrospect, and I happened to have mentioned that, and it got out, and I was called before the commission, and I was told that uh, no matter what your comments are, you cannot make them. I was required to write a letter to Richard of apology, and to the WBC, to Don Jose Suleiman, that uh, I wasn't paying attention. I had to eat, which I gladly did. I was directed by the commission that keep your thoughts to yourself and never, as Rob said, you see that opinion all the time. And let me tell you something. Um, I guess the, the ego in our trade, if you mention it, everyone has their own style. And early on, I mentioned it to a young referee on the way up. He was fooled by a shoe shine. Kids taking allegedly taking shots, taking nothing. He jumps and he stops it. And the guy and the guy says, "Why'd you stop it?" Right. If they have enough energy to complain, you stopped it too soon. Right. Mm. So I mentioned that. Right away. Here's a friend. You weren't there. And then what's the big cop out, Rob? Safety. Sure. Safety. So I learned then. I don't. Guys, you're right on point. I don't say a word. Right. At, at all. So. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, too, though, when, when you look at your career and, and you mention right in your backyard and so many fights in your backyard in Atlantic City, we mentioned a little bit about the Atlantic City Boxing Hall of Fame, and, and Rob and I talked about this at the top of the um, show in the heyday, the 70s, the 80s, the early 90s. Like, when you think of Atlantic City boxing, what, what resonates? What, what's the first thing that jumps out in your mind? Item number one, from a historic sense, right where we're sitting. It must be in the genes or the blood. My father, may he rest in peace, carried, it was card boys. This was the Wall Stream, where there were fights every week during the 20s and the 30s. And my father carried the cards. To answer your question, I am so blessed. I am the prototype referee, right place at the right time. In the 1980s, there were more fights with every major promoter in these venues, and that's what I think of the work. In 1983, my second year, there were over 200 cards. I was the first full-time city DA, prosecutor. Sure. I would have my bag, and I'd leave my office at 4.30, and Monday, the Claridge, Tuesday, the Trop, Wednesday Playboy, <laughs> Thursday. It was, it was an amazing, amazing time. And I learned, and I learned under the very best. Jersey Joe Walcott, um, Chief Inspector Johnson, uh, the Apowhatan Indian Chief. Every major promoter, every major fighter, I had the pleasure of being in contact with.
Any any fight in particular that you've uh, um, judged or you refereed? Any fight that stands out? I know you just mentioned uh, the Taylor fight, but uh, <laughs> any fight that stands out and said that I'm I was I'm happy and I'm proud to have been a part of that fight. I you know the fight uh, that was a career a re a restarter. That was an 07, and I, I had many terrific fights here. I had Holmes and Mercer mm. here. I had Ray Mercer on the beach, the only fight in this era on the beach mm. at resorts. But I became noticed, re-noticed again, with Kelly coming back and stopping Jermaine, because Kelly was one scintilla away from being stopped. So... Um, I've been blessed to be part of many, many great fights in Atlantic City, and uh, that stands out because I was rediscovered, so to speak, and it, uh, work started to flow again. You know, I was, I'm never complaining, just explaining that sometimes you had a little lull, sure. but all of a sudden that made the fight of the year, picture of the year, photo of the year, ring magazine, all of a sudden Smoker's rediscovered. Before uh, last one for me, and I know we got to start wrapping up now. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. When, when when you were a kid, you used to watch the Friday night the Gillette Friday night fights, and people don't remember Gillette was a major major sponsor. <laughs> and we were going back. I'm not dating. a little hair gel, not I'm a little losing. dabble, do ya? It's I'm a, just saying. I'm no. dating myself. No, 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 no. But that's I mean because my grandfather and and my my, my, my uncles and my father. I mean that you're going back, right? I was allowed to stay up on Friday nights with my father, Gillette Cavalcade of Sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny Addy from <laughs> St. Nicholas Arena. So <laughs> it's it's been a great ride, and I'm blessed that it, it's still, even in the late stages, I'm still getting work, and uh, I've built tremendous relationships. Um, I'm scheduled in Europe in February, Bermuda in oh, February. World traveling. I mean, you yeah. guys, yeah, you guys got <laughs> Yeah, made, I've got, you know, um, you know I've been very, very blessed. I have more countries and more states than any referee in the history of the game. Rob did his homework. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to get there with you. I'm yeah, to well, with you. you're on the right track, right? You're on the right <laughs> track. I had a lot of fun in St. Mark. Um, Let me tell you something about your partner. Yeah. Did a tremendous job. He supervised several fights over in St. Martin. Uh, the government was a little here, there. Rob stood up, made sure all the officials were cared for. It's the kind of guy we that, need, the, the especially sports, when we travel. The sports need that. <laughs> Listen, congratulations. I know we'll talk along the way. We'll take a quick time out, but always good to catch up. Thanks for the time. Always All a right. pleasure. You got a good chat with right. Steve Smoger. We'll take a quickie time out. Again, Double Job Podcast coming at you live from the Playground Pier and, of course, tryx57.com.